I thought I'd make a little video about what's inside of a hard drive. This is a two and a half inch um, laptop hard drive. Um, this is the, the serial ATA or the, the SATA connector. It's kind of like a set of the two, two plugs here. Maybe this shows it better. There's uh, the power feed on one side and then like the data feed on the other side. But uh, a hard drive uh, has a cover, it has a label on it. Um, it's like an aluminum chassis, and then there's a circuit board on the other side. So I'm going to open this up and show you what's inside. Uh, typically the cover has screws around the perimeter, and there's usually a screw under the label here. So I pried the cover off, and you can see that one uh, middle screw hole that's under the label. That actually goes right here in the center of this arm. So what we have is we have the this disc is, uh, is the platter. There's actually two discs on this drive. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. But there's two discs in this one, and they spin, and then the heads are on the, the tip of this little arm here, and this arm is motorized and can drive around and uh, move the heads to different positions on the platters. And so the information is stored in uh, you know, circular rings or like a spiral around the disc, and that's where all the data is. On the cover, there's a rubber gasket all the way around and a little, um, a little like kind of paper filter element. And there's also a little like paper filter over here to keep dust away. So hard drives, they need to be really clean and uh, not have any dust or any particles in them when they work. Otherwise, that, could, that debris could cause damage. Here's a solid state hard drive. Um, you know, same size, but about double the storage capacity. Uh, same SATA connector on the end. So I've taken the screws off of the plate of this one. So I can take the cover off and show you what's inside. So this is, this you know, solid state is all electronic components, no moving parts or anything. And, you know, what we have here is a main controller, processor, that's going to basically, you know, read and write, shuttle all the information around. And then these four identical chips, those are actually the, the storage chips. And you can see that there's four other kind of um, seats or beds, you know, for, for more chips. This way they could use the same circuit board and, you know, put on more chips on it and have a higher capacity drive with really, you know, very small um, incremental cost to make, a, make the higher end or the, the larger capacity drive. So the solid state drives have you know some advantages of course. They've got no moving parts so there's much less uh, that's likely to go wrong and they're not as finicky for weather or for contamination or humidity or anything like that. You know they're, they're all, all sealed up in computer chips so they should be much more stable. On the circuit board side, the circuit board is attached to the aluminum chassis with uh, screws kind of around the perimeter and usually in the middle. And why the circuit board is attached this way is, again, to keep the chassis as much as sealed as possible to reduce the risk of contamination. The circuit board really has uh, contacts here that go through, that go through the chassis. And the other ones are, are right here and go here. So when this this board is is closed up, those little contact pads. So again, that's right there and there. They touch, and that's uh, for the the head um, control of the head and the you know sending the information, reading and writing the information back. And the contacts here by the center motor. This is the stepper motor that spins the platters. It gets its you know, um, power through these little buttons here. If you have a hard drive that just kind of stops working altogether, um, these little uh, metal spots can get corroded just from time and through humidity. So it might be worth taking the drive, uh, you know, taking the circuit board off the drive and cleaning these up with um, like a pencil eraser or something like that. Just be very careful because there's a lot of surface mount components on this board, and if you know any one of these little components gets bumped off, 
then you know the, the board will probably no longer work. So I've plugged the drive in now with a, just a IDE SATA adapter to, to USB. So the, the computer is just going to look at the drive as just an external memory device like a you know, memory stick or something like that. And I don't know how well you can see, but the platters are spinning and the head is uh, kind of in the, the middle of the, of the platter is kind of in a ready state. And I want to point out that you know the head is pivoting around this spot here and one neat thing about hard drives is that they needed a way to move the head precisely back and forth but they didn't want to overshoot the position so they wanted to somehow have a way of dampening the movement of the head and so right under here is a really strong magnet and the end of the head is a little um, piece of aluminum or it's, it's an aluminum arm there's a little blade of aluminum that goes between two magnets and it creates an eddy current which is kind of a like a self-dampening system. The faster the aluminum moves past the magnet, the more magnetic force is going to try to stop the the aluminum. And that's a really good damper damper system to prevent the heads from overshooting. So since the, the drive has kind of initialized, it's waiting for me to do something on the computer, the heads have gone and parked over to the side. And if I try to, uh, let's say, open up a folder or something like that, then it, um, you can see that it starts doing a, a bit of work. The head is going back and forth, retrieving information, sending the information to the computer so it can pull up information about the folder. Or open a file or whatever it's doing. So it makes some neat little sounds, and it's moving along. I've actually asked it to... Uh, you just tell me uh, the properties of the folder, how many files, and the file size of the folder. So it's doing a lot of work to try to find out all that information. So when you ask the computer to access the hard drive, this is essentially what it's doing. It's also worth pointing out that if a drive loses power you know, while it's running or while it's uh, transmitting information, um, as the disk is spinning, um, a, there's a spring loaded, or there's a spring on the arm here, uh, it, so when it loses power, the spring will pull the, the arm to the side so that the heads are no longer contacting the surface of the disc. So let's see if I can pull the power plug here. 